Good morning, Montag. How are you doing? All right. Let's go to America for a quick one. Housing market is terrific if you're rich. New York. It's starting to feel as if there are two housing markets. One for the rich and international buyers and one for everyone else. Consider foreclosure ravaged Detroit. In the historic Green Acres district, a haven for hipsters, a pristine three-bedroom brick Tudor recently sold for $6,000, about what a buyer would have paid during the Great Depression. Yet, just 15 miles away in the posh suburban enclave of Birmingham, bidding wars are back. Multi-million dollar mansions are selling quickly. Sales this August were up 21% from the previous year. And the country club has ended its stealth, stealth discounts on new memberships and Main Street's retail storefronts are full. I think we're going to see more of this stratification, are we not? Where the mega-rich stay mega-rich and flashy and everyone else starts toning it down an awful lot, whether they have to or not. Second link is emerging markets, five-year CDSs, credit default swaps, insurance on whether these sovereigns are going to pay their money back or not, and for the Czech Republic, Austria, South Africa, Russia, Poland and Turkey, as you can see they've gone very um, very upwards and that was at the end of last week and this morning this is Monday morning for me now um, Asian markets have gone up similarly it's almost as though um, the market makers in their offices now are actually doing analysis and really working out these sovereign nations ability to repay and working out other um, people's ability to repay and trying to mark accordingly. Greek default would destroy faith in Europe. Angela Merkel speaking on Sunday. She goes blah 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 and down at the end then there's not a single person that would put their money in the Europe anymore. Greek default would destroy faith in Europe, Merkel. I mean, you know, don't you? <laughs> All this weekend has been endless talk about the inevitability of what is, will be. The second Greek default, really we've had one for the 21%, and now we're going to, the next one's going to be at least 50%. But Merkel could say on Sunday, that a default of Greece would destroy faith in Europe. Really, I think politicians should be kept as window dressing, a bit like royalty. You know, just ask to open shopping centres and things like that. Because really, when it comes down to it, when it comes to doing important things, they just don't seem to be very good at it. This final um, link is Ambrose Evans Pritchard in The Telegraph, who, yes, I have quoted many a long time now. The Geithner plan, that was Turbo Timmy coming over to Europe and telling them in Poland what to do. The Geithner plan must be accompanied by a monetary blitz, since the fiscal card is largely exhausted and Germany refuses to lower its savings rate to rebalance the EMU system. Quite a lot in there. So Timmy comes over, tells them what to do, and they go, oh, go away, you silly American person. We'll work it out for ourselves, yeah. And now they've gone over to Washington and been browbeaten there, and they're going, mm -hmm. Maybe uh, the Geithner plan, not bad. Uh. So they're reviewing it, at least. They've been told to do something, and uh, they don't know what to do. The Geithner plan must be accompanied by a monetary blitz, I agree, since the fiscal card is largely exhausted. 
um, the countries can't pump more money government wise and blow out their debt to GDP on their sovereign debt and Germany refuses to lower its savings rate to rebalance the EMU system Germany just can't it's just developed a system a way of doing things over years decades and that's the way it does things it's in the psyche of the American people or the German people and you can't just flick a switch and ex expect them to go wildly spending money so Germany refuses to lower its savings rate to rebalance the EMU system the EMU system is not balanced at all the peripheral countries are 10 20 30 percent unbalanced from the core unbalanced in this case meaning that if they had floating individual currencies the peripheral currencies would be devalued pro rata to the core by depending which country it might be on the peripheral uh, the periphery would be 10 20 30 maybe even 40 50 percent but that uh, currency rebalance can't happen so there is the um, unbalance in, in imbalance in trapped in the eurozone the only plausible option is for the ecb to let rip with unsterilized bond purchases on a mass scale with a treaty change in the bank's mandate to target jobs and growth yep i think why not things are this desperate um the ecb has been set up as i keep saying between these tight tram lines very tight parameters of what it can do it was meant to um, be a, a doppelganger for the Bundesbank and it's gone well outside these parameters now anyway so the politicians can come in tear up that um, those parameters and set them an awful lot wider and say the mandate now is to target jobs and growth do what is necessary and if unsterilized bond purchases are necessary just do it at the moment the ECB is sterilizing where it can the bond purchases of Italy and Spain and Greece Ireland and Portugal it makes up the funny money and buys the bonds in the secondary market of those peripheral countries but another office sells EC bonds ECB bonds out to the to the market and gets in real euros to fill the hole made by the um, the funny money buying of the peripheral bonds so for the moment to a great extent these bond purchases are sterilized um, what is necessary now is probably what would be quantitative easing and not sterilizing them in the future this would weaken the euro and this would be the idea as long as it's got the um, definite nod from the United States of America because if not this would definitely be a currency war and if the United States and EU started a currency war everyone would inevitably join in so to get around their problem uh, the euro could do a devaluation of the entire euro of 20 or 30 percent which will make it better for the peripheral countries to survive in the world and obviously would make it glorious for um, German exporting but not so glorious for the Germans who are allergic to inflation because with a lower euro buying in goods would obviously cost more and the inflation rate would go up this would weaken the euro giving a lifeline to southern manufacturers keep competing with China I don't really go with the competing with China but competing with other reasonable countries it would engineer an inflationary mini boom in Germany undoubtedly forcing up relative German costs within the EMU undoubtedly because it's too hard to explain but more money would even go to Germany if this happened and more money more inflation would be created in Germany than the periphery that would be the beginning of a solution it would be the beginning of a solution albeit a bad one and yes it is it would be a bad one 
but I think we have totally established now that there are no good ones, or even half good ones, only bad ones. Sorry, Deutschland. History has conspired against you. Again. You must sign away 2 trillion euro and debauch your central bank and accept 5% inflation, at least, or be blamed for Gotterdammerung. Oh, that's the shits hitting the fans. It's not fair, but that is what monetary union always meant. Didn't they tell you? <laughs>